Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District monthly meeting. It's Wednesday, June 13th, 2018. Could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Looks like we're going to be lucky tonight. The fireworks are going to go off. Uh, they're all set up. I looked at the radar. We're in good shape. Um, and I, I got confirmation from um, the fireworks guys. So if anybody needs to let anybody know. Unfortunately, we're not live. I don't think. Are we live now? No. So, um, so that just if you want to spread the news after the meeting. Okay. We're going to start right off with uh, Meredith Collins. She's uh, from the State Parks, and it's the DNCR. What does it stand for again? Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. All right. So uh, if you want to get up, just kind of give us a, an idea of what's going on and what, and, what, and what we need to do to help. And um, if you're looking for any help from other people or, or if you're looking for people to work, whatever. Sure. Know. Yeah. Um, as far as staffing goes, we're, we're actually – in pretty good shape right now. Um, we were a little worried but because we didn't get any of the J1 students this year, but we're actually looking pretty good. Um, in most of our departments, we're, we're just short a few people um, across the board. But uh, some of our big ticket items, um, I have put together a presentation on storm damage that we've seen throughout the Seacoast, so if anyone's interested in that, I can give you my card and email it to you. Um, it's the same one that I showed last night for those that were at the community meeting. Um, uh, probably the biggest ticket item on there is the we signed yesterday or entered started to finalize a contract with uh, for the replacement of the stairwells at North Beach that are damaged. Um, there are two that are closed right now to the public, um, and then <laughs> and then there's one more that um, that is in rough shape. Thank you. Do I need to repeat anything? Is everybody good? <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah. So we entered. We're we're going to be spending about fifty thousand dollars up at North Beach to replace the stairwells that are damaged, um, and then the other big replacement that we have been looking into. It won't happen right away. Is the replacement of the railing that was damaged during um, Winter Storm Riley, just up uh, across from a little bit south of Ron's Landing. We have a temporary railing in place there right now. Um, to replace just that one section that was damaged was $22,000 because it's a custom-made railing. So we're looking into doing a much larger section so that we can get more for our, for our money's worth on that. Um, we have purchased a $500,000 radio system. Um, they actually started installing the antennas today ahead of schedule, which is really exciting for us. Um, our previous radio system that we have been using runs off of cell service, so on a busy day here at the beach, we have a really hard time um, communicating because everybody's phones are fighting for Verizon signal, and uh, we end up not being able to communicate, which is for the lifeguards a lifeline, for all of our departments, are, it's how we communicate. So that's really important to us. Um, as far as storm damage goes, we, over the last weekend, it did get declared as a, um, a disaster, so we will be getting reimbursement from FEMA. Um, it doesn't happen right away. We still have to pay that cost up front for all the repair work we've done, which is um, a little bit shy of $700,000 out of pocket. So that hit us hard, for sure. Um, what else? Is there anything else in particular that anyone would like to hear about, or? I think that that um, the uh, photos that you did. I, I think if you could give that to Channel Twenty Two, I think they'd probably like to because they have a screen that goes. Yeah. I think the people in town would be interested to see. Okay. I'm not. I, you know, I can't speak for them. They're here. You can ask them. But I, I think <laughs> that would be uh, helpful for the, the people in the town, people in North Beach. You know, they, they to see how much work the state is actually doing. Sure. You know, yep. Instead of, you know, it'll, it'll show them that <laughs> yeah, you guys it, aren't sitting around. It hit me. I said it a couple of times last night because it just hit me yesterday when I was like going through like finalizing the PowerPoint. I'm like, 
This has been three months. We've done all, this is, we've done a lot in three months, so I was feeling pretty proud. So I had to throw that out there a couple times. But <laughs> you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Um, Thanks. If there's anything that we can do to help, um, let us know. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. What does DNC stand for? Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. So it's probably not your area. Maybe you're not the right question. What is the lifeguard situation on the beaches? That is our. That is us. Yep. Yep. So we are. We're mostly full. We have. Th we have three open positions, um, and we've done a ton of outreach. We've been going to career fairs at different high schools. Um, we went to Winnicunit, and Exeter, and a couple of other places as well. Um, and yeah, we're we're doing pretty well. We have a lot of high school students this year, which is good. Fill me in on how the staffing goes for the the various beaches. You know how many lifeguards. Duty so, yeah, so our, well, all of our ocean rescue is all under the same um, uh, sort of department throughout the seacoast. So South Beach, Main Beach, North Beach, Northampton, Genis, and Wallace. And they're, about four, they're usually about 48 employees in that department, 48 to 50. Um, and <coughs> we never staff less than six, six people on the Main Beach here. Um, for safety reasons, and that, that gives us enough people to um, have our vehicles out patrolling and to have always have backup because you, the, we don't ever want the lifeguards to be responding to a situation alone. So you usually have six on the main beach? More than that. What are but they? yeah, we How have uh, North, North Beach. Um, you know, I don't know off the top of my head, I, right. but um, if you want to give me your contact info, I can get that for you. And how about on the other side of the bridge? It's we don't do anything over there. That's, 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 right, that's right. not part of, okay. Right, yep. Yeah. Right, thank you. Yeah. Three was on North Beach minimum. Yeah. North, Northampton there. Uh, Northampton there are two. No, North Beach there are more, I think more than three. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I have a suggestion you may want to entertain. You may want to consider doing an economic impact study of the state park benefiting the town. So, so people get a better perspective on it. You're not just a cost center for the town. Any other questions? Um, uh, the dunes, you know, the damage, they yeah. especially at the very south end, is any of that going to be rebuilt or is that just natural? Um, so we did, we have piled some sand back up there. I don't know if you've seen it recently, but um, so um, if you haven't seen it, I actually have photos of it in the in my PowerPoint as well. We lost, um, I, I actually I have no idea how much material we lost, but a lot. Yeah, I mean, in areas, it's 10 feet tall, the cliffs. But we did push some of the sand back up against it um, to stop any more sections from kind of sloughing off. Um, but as far as repairing, um, I would refer you to um, Allison Abenhart, she was also she she was at the meeting last night. Um, they're they're working on a uh, beach restoration project, and they we actually have a community garden down in South Beach um, where we're planting um, planting different species of, of dune grass, and then neighbors and anyone that has dune front property can come and take that those plants and plant them on their property to help restore the sections. Uh, and part of that, they have already restored quite a few areas in the area of uh, of South Beach this this spring. They have so. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Ron? No, I was just going to say there's a professor up there, Plymouth. Um, professor Goss. Yeah, he's done. Larry Goss. He's done that kind of oh, on the he, he, study. You mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. He might be retired, but he's, I think he's retired. Yeah. He might still what have. was done by you and I? What was this last thing? Goss. 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 Okay. He's, he was very good. And the uh, recreation cool. part of the University of New Hampshire is Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. Before Thank you. Before you leave, I'd just like to make one comment. Your cooperation with the precinct is spectacular. I think it's probably a template of how intergovernmental relations can be and should be, and good things happen when they are. So thank you for all your help. Thank you.
Uh, oh, okay. Michael, you made it just in time. Yeah. You ready? No, sure. Where's the agenda? Oh. Yeah, right, right over there is the R.A.B. guy. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know what? While you're setting up, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll jump right to old business. Yeah, you might as well. It's going to take a minute to warm up. Okay. All right. So, uh, Bob, do you have any old business? Yeah. Uh, a lot of things politically have been going on in the town and at the state level, which we should probably acknowledge because they are to everyone's benefit. The legislature fast-tracked legislation concerning the sewer pipe from the beach to the wastewater treatment plant. The governor signed that legislation, and to the town's credit, they've already entered into an agreement for a temporary piping from the beach to the wastewater treatment plant until such time as the pond article is approved and the failed pipe can be replaced. Uh, these are, in my opinion, examples where government is working in everybody's best interest. And we would strongly recommend you support the Warren article for the bonding to fix that pipe. It's like the main artery, and you don't really have a very good beach seasonally if you don't have that pipe functioning. <coughs> Um, so we talked about the parking app and a directory app that, that we have. Uh, it's almost complete. You can, if you text, so I, if you text 555-888, you'll be able to get the app through either an, uh, Apple or Android or is it Google, is that what you're saying? Right. So that, that app, you can go online, you can find out about what parking lots are going to have openings. It's going to, uh, if we have any emergency um, messages, we can put that on the app. If fireworks are canceled, we can put that on the app. It's, it's, it, it, we're still in the process of building it, but this is an app you really want to put on your phone. We're going to push it out there. If you want to go to a restaurant, you can click on the restaurant. It'll bring up their menu. If you want to, and you know how many cars are available at the casino parking lot, it'll, it'll tell you where you can park, what shows are playing at the ballroom. You, it, this whole app is, is going to be amazing when it's complete. Uh, it was very impressive. I, I, very I'm, I'm going impressed. With it. The weather is, the weather um, app on, on it is very right, accurate. Right, so and if you click on uh, the, the place you were interested in, uh, Google Maps will come up and tell you how to get there. Uh, it, it, it just is a lot going on. And this is something that we're doing in cooperation with the Hampton Chamber of Commerce and the Village District are funding this. And um, we're, we're quite excited about it. So uh, definitely put it on your, te text that number, 555-888. How are you publicizing this? Well, that's, uh, we're going to put what? signs out everywhere. We're going to have pamphlets out everywhere. And, and our ads and stuff, we're going to put it at the bottom of the ads. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be, it'll probably take time, but I, Everything we do online, John will tell you, we have hundreds of thousands of hits. So we, we, can, we can get this out there. Right? Well, it's going to get out. We're going to actually, Mike O'Neill, I think, came up with it. Is it your idea of little cards? Yeah. So we're going to make, um, I talked to business them last cards, night. And we're going to make them out of the time of It's good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it something you need a, a smartphone for, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can't, get, you can't look at this app from like a laptop. <laughs> I think you can, but I don't know. When, like, yeah, if laptop. you're driving in the car, you're not going to have a laptop. You can use our website. So you can go on it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Whatever. So it's just a smartphone. It'll come on your smartphone. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. Stephen, we got to get some 14-year-old kids to teach you how to do these things. Yeah. I don't have a smartphone, as you know. So. Yeah. You know? You're going to have to trade in your flip phone. <laughs> Sorry. He'll open the, the slider and see if it's raining. He'll know if it's canceled. Careful now. All right. So, um, Michael Mooch, I guess they're called, right? Um, from Boston Circus Guild. This is a, uh, Bob found this last year, and we were able to put a show on um, in September, and it was fantastic. It was
was a great yeah, show. Like. And then uh, we decided we're going to try to make it a regular thing. Wait, so I, I want uh, Michael to go over what's the, what we're going to have this year. Good. All right, so uh, as, as I was introduced, I'm Michael Michiola. Most folks know me as Mooch. Easier to remember than Michael. So. Um, we had a fantastic time last year. Uh, we put on about a 45 minute show um, down on the beach. Um, it was a lot of fun um, to talk a little bit about who we are as an organization in case you weren't there and understand how we exist as a group. If you want to hit the lights so you can see this a little better. These are actual shots from the show, um, but I'm going to give you a quick uh, information about us as an organization uh, so that you know why we do what we do. Um, the goal this year is for September 15th. Um, but Boston Circus Guild is a collection of, at this point, almost 80 uh, circus performers and professionals um, from the greater Boston area, but we have New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, all around, um, and we are run by performers as well. I know that doesn't always sound like the best idea, but it actually is the best idea because performers understand uh, what it is that they need, and our performers have had so much experience. I myself am a performer. I'm in the show. Um, I've been doing this for so many years that I am able to communicate well with Bob and John about what it is that we need and what need we need to do. Um, and we have our organization set up such that we have communication levels that are going to make things easy for everybody. It was a joy last year. It was a learning process, but we made it work. And I think that as a trial run, it was fantastic. Um, and I wanted to just show a quick couple photos. Um, so on the far side there, you see what we have is called double staves. Staves are basically three and a half foot long um, uh, rods that have fire on both ends. They're manipulated to make giant bursts of flame like you see here. This is me on the on the far end here, uh, making giant bursts of flame um, for extra effect. Um, a lot of fun with that as well. We have poi, which is in the center here, um, which is basically a chain with a ball on the end of it. It's lit on fire and spun around. So all of this was done. Um, as you can see, it's fiery and fun, but it's also set to really high energy music. We had a great time down on the beach, and I actually have a video that will give you a sense of... I wonder if we're going to have audio. I hope we are. Uh, the... The turnout was amazing. Um, it was really fun, and we have some feedback from last year that we're going to slide it a little further towards the ocean so that we get a little more seating in the front and are able to bring more people down kind of on that first level and get kind of more of a stadium seating effect. But as you can see in this video, it was jam-packed. Uh, people came out with their kids, families, was great. Um, and basically... We kept folks engaged for the full 45 minutes. A ton of fun with not just solo performances. We, we really focused on making sure we had group performances, at least two performers at any given time, um, creating as much interplay between our performers as possible. Um, it's a lot more fun anyway for us. I'll be, I'll be re real with you guys. Um, we ended with a large finale that I want to skip to for you guys that had all six performers out at once. It was actually so large that you couldn't even capture it on video very well. <laughs> um, but we do a mixture of both object manipulation, spinning these objects around, as well as acrobatics, if you see stacking performers one on top of another, to add even more height and spectacle to the evening. Um, this is a show that we've actually done before. We've done this show at uh, an event in New York for several years now. Um, and this is the largest version of that show with the six performers. And as we can hear here, audience had a great time with us. Um, and I also wanted to highlight that, John, your work in terms of marketing on everything, uh, we got a lot of engagement, so lots of photos from this. Um, these photos mostly were done by someone from, yeah from your organization, um, which I think they did a fantastic job, never having uh, captured fire before. Um, I think they did a fantastic job. Um, all of the different options in terms of multi-performers, we had a, f a flaming sword fight, which was a, a kid favorite for sure, and my favorite as well. Um, <laughs> and then we also, like I mentioned, we do these acrobatic stunts where we have performers stacked one on another, throwing torches back and forth, adding to the high spectacle of it. Um, and the engagement was really good um, in terms of everyone who came out was super supportive. We stayed afterwards for a solid 30, 45 minutes, taking photos with people, answering questions, uh, and then afterwards there was just kind of this continual, uh, had a great time, uh, you know, so, so much fun, huge treat, enjoyed it. 
Um, the community came out in droves. Um, I know there was a, a marathon earlier that day, is that correct? Um, so it was a nice treat also to, I'm sure there was lots of tired people that kind of wanted to relax and enjoy themselves. So it was an opportunity for us to kind of really give them a treat um, while also uh, making sure the local residents had a great time as well. Um, so our plan is hopefully to get even more people out there this year. Um, I, we have not decided to increase the budget, so we're going to keep it in the same range in terms of the six performer show. Um, and we're going to get, like I said, we're going to move it out a little bit closer to the oceans so that we get a little bit uh, better seating options for people. It was a little bit tricky. Um, if you saw in that video, we had basically everybody all around us. The best seats are in the front and the sides, but we had even people who were so excited to be there that they were coming around the back. Not even the best view, and they were still excited. They were still engaged. They were there the entire evening. It was a lot of fun with us. Um, so hopefully by sliding it out a little bit, um, it'll, be, it'll be better for everybody. Um, I don't know if you guys have any plans in terms of things that you want to do, uh, engaging any other vendors or anything like that. No, um, but just moving it out so we get two levels, stadium type um, yeah. viewing. Yeah. Um, we learned a lot. Like I said, we've done this show for six years, uh, but we usually do it um, in a you know, grove. And this was the first time we put on this size show on a beach. And we learned some things from it. We learned ways that we need to kind of mitigate things for ourselves to make it even more spectacular. Um, and just kind of our confidence level on things that, you know, there was a fog that rolled in on us. <laughs> uh, and it was just a little bit of a, a different environment than we we're used to. So now we're going to have uh, different um, methods for ourselves to keep things a little bit more comfortable for us backstage so that everything will be even better this year in terms of our confidence level and our comfort level. Um, the state fire department was super supportive of us last year. This was the largest fire performance done in the state of New Hampshire since they started their certification program with their licensing um, and it was a big deal it was a real concern on their part of whether or not they were going to be comfortable letting something this big happen and Chris Wyman and his crew were just thrilled with how everything went went off um, they were very comfortable with how every, everyone communicated internally um, and we did a demo that day made them comfortable with how we were gonna lay it out and they're comfortable with our idea of sliding things further back as well um, they have no problems with that um, they have no concerns with how we did things, so they're all for it. That's half the battle is making yeah. them happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? I have one. I've got to ask you this question because I have to do this for Glenn Franchar doing entertainment. We're having a country week shortly, and I really have to ask you, in the Boston Guild, do you have a performer that can use a hus whip <laughs> bull whip. A bull whip. Yeah. That's what I mean. A bull yeah. whip. We actually do have we have a performer that does uh, what we call trick whipping, where he cracks something out of somebody's hand. Uh, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was going to suggest that we had a, 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 a beautiful woman in a in a bikini and the <laughs> put some butterflies like on around. Oh. So you actually have somebody who could do We that? have someone who does oh, usually God. roses. Actually, it's usually roses. Roses. And if someone is bold and they want to put it in their mouth, they can. Snap it right out of the mouth. Next year, hand, might, see, so. that, it, this year it's a little bit late, but next year, Glenn. With the rose here. Yeah, we're gonna put it, yeah, I'll put the rose in my mouth. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, excellent. Yeah, yeah. You'll be perfect next step on your lunch because we're going to have you do it. That's okay. I just had to ask because I had suggested it and it was like, I bet you the Boston Gill has somebody. <laughs> see? We do. Okay, good. What about going as a theater in the round kind of thing? Uh, they were you anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's tri the one tricky part that we have for that is that there is a backstage no matter what we do. So uh, we I've toyed with this. I've kind of driven the performers a little bit crazy with this idea is that we've we've been in these settings before where it ends up feeling like it really becomes in the round. Um, so I'm happy to 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 throw it back out there for them again, and we kind of basically rotate each act. There's about. 12 acts I think in the in the show we can kind of just rotate you know this act is facing towards the boardwalk this act will be facing now towards the west side on the beach and then this fat this one will face a little bit this way this one will face this way we can absolutely do that if we feel like the turnout's going to be there again and we don't want to kind of you know make people feel like oh I didn't get here early enough I'm not going to get to see it front facing the whole time it's worth exploring I'm open to it so is it possible for us to move it closer to the stage I think the fire uh, chief didn't want it. Closer to the the, the, building. the building in between the gazebo and the, right? And you get the walk down. Yeah. You stay this, you get the boardwalk going down there so a lot of elderly people can walk without having to I'm to thinking that if we had it closer to the corner, yeah. where that little, there's a little stage there that we yeah. don't use. Um, 
but if we were in that area, that more people would be able to get be on the sidewalk, and that the ramp goes down to the ocean right in front of. I don't. I'm, you know, it's not my. Deal. However, that was the problem last year. Was where it was, and you got to remember the fog ramp came in. That did not help <laughs> And if they, it, he's right. If it was moved over a little bit, I think it would make a lot of sense because it would be a three-sided. You know, they're well, on the beach and people could stand up here. Do we? No. We I don't remember where we tapped power from. Which, yeah, which it was from the, I think it was from the light, light posts, one of the light posts, yeah. yeah. As long as we can run an extension cord out, we, we can go anywhere that's comfortable for you guys. There is you know. plenty of power in that. In that we corner. have an outdoor stage with yep. the power system. Never been used. He's only used it in the young. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, how you stage it, I'm just looking for a way to get more people to be able well, to. Maybe we'll cut down. At some stage, we'll take a walk around there yeah. and see what, what, what he's talking about. And then, with obviously, the uh, fire, fire chief and the there. fire marshal yep. will have to approve it. Okay. I mean, yeah, it would be great. Let's let's chat this week about yeah. different options. Yeah. Hi. I'll just need the dimensions. Yeah. Forty by forty last year. Yeah. And then he, they, he wants fifteen twenty. So yeah. Could you take a couple of minutes and explain what other types of shows you folks do? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, so fire performance is just one of many of the skills on our roster. We have contortionists, aerialists, acrobats, jugglers, stilters, hula hoopers. Oh, what am I forgetting? Living statues. Uh, we do everything under the sun. We're actually going to be doing uh, a really fun uh, event for uh, a company, their member appreciation event. Uh, we're going into the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, and we're putting on uh, a full-length circus show with a full circus band, 12-person band, uh, brass section. They're like a really fun mix of kind of klezmer, jazz, swing, um, really just kind of European feel. Um, they really add that kind of traditional circus vibe to it, and we're going to be having aerialists, uh, trio juggling act, a group acrobatics performance, uh, all inside the Museum of Fine Arts. Um, so we tailor shows to, to do anything based on the two, the two limiting factors for us are always budget and space. And if you can let us know where we're capped on those things, we tailor something and make it as big as we can. Uh, I mean, that's something we should discuss in terms of, it's more of a concern for you guys in terms of how much promotion you're doing on it, and then we want to make sure that you feel supported. You know, I, I know we're trying to do it towards the end of the season to make sure it still feels like we're, we're adding to it and keeping people coming back. Um, but yeah, if, it's a big week in Rachel yeah. Beach. It's going to be 20 years. I mean, you always, everyone gets packed on that weekend. The following weekend's big, big too. There's another race that weekend. Yeah, I mean, we can we can discuss backup options, but at the end of the day, it's, it's usually, can you guys fit it into the schedule? You know, we can we can make it happen, um, but that's that's up to you guys in terms of if you want to find a rain date. Uh, I mean, the fog was challenging, but totally doable. Even if we, it, you know, it, it gave us I, I don't want to say it actually drizzled on us, but like it missed it enough that that level of if we kind of had a sprinkle happening, totally okay. If we got torrential downpour, <laughs> then I mean, no one wants to sit out there anyway. So, <laughs> you know. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. I just make one final comment. The fire chief has been very positive about you folks and the way you conduct your affairs. And he's very supportive of the program, as is the fire warden. So. It is something we do not take lightly. Uh, they have a job to do, and it's an important one. And we appreciate their communication level too. They've been fantastic. Good. All right. All set. So back. Oh, you're going to leave Mike? Oh. Because if you're all set. So we also have um, movie, movie night will be starting July 9th. Is that right? Yep. All right. So Mondays in the, in the summer starting July 9th will be movie night. Uh, stage is up and running. Are we full time now? or? Every night. Every night. There'll be acts on the sea shelf stage. So how many shows are we doing this year? Counting all the extras. Somewhere around 109, I think. So every year we seem to add a little bit. This year I think we added 10%. So, so that's great. It's really good. And you're doing a great job, Len. Uh, fireworks, I told you, we'll have tonight. Um, and it'll be Saturday night for the sand sculpture event. So on the new business, um, Greg Grady and his gang are doing Phenomenal job out there. Uh, 
you ever come down and check out the uh, sand sculptures? Um, the the uh, voting will be Saturday, right? One, yeah, one to three. One to three. So we'll get some people in for the people's choice. Yeah, and definitely get down. Um, I don't think I have any other new business. Do you have any new no. business? Not really. I just like to refer to the sand sculpture event is our museum on the sand. It exposes thousands and thousands of people to art in a way they normally don't think of art as being. <coughs> And many of these folks don't normally go to museums. So it's an extremely culturally <coughs> enriching experience, and particularly for the children. They have lessons also for children. That's right, yeah. And speaking of children, the playground is, uh, we have a couple new things in the playground. So we've been fixing a lot of things. Um, we got most of the lights repaired. <laughs> Flags are up. Um, flags are up. So the playground is up and running. It runs all year, but right now we have a couple new items in there. So and I want to thank the state again for locking it and opening it for us. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, last night the lights went on. That's because he's working on. So we're, we're down to two that aren't working. So he's uh, <coughs> getting there. So. Yep. And we had something else I can't remember. Um, Approval of minutes, since Maureen's not here, we're not going to do them. Approval of minutes, we'll wait till she's here next month. She was missed tonight, but she's celebrating an anniversary, is that right? Yes. Yes. So. Michael's uh, birthday also. And Michael's birthday, right. It's a two for one sale. So now we're at public comment. Could Does I, anybody want to speak? I'd like to speak, please. As treasurer, or as, as a resident, or as, as a resident. As Identify yourself. Stephen LeBranch, 469 Ocean Boulevard. Okay. I'm a bit surprised that the two commissioners of the Hampton Beach Village District that are also on the Hampton Beach Area Commission recommended to move a parking lot to where the present Route 1A Scenic Byway and put four lanes of traffic on the west side of Ocean Boulevard. What about all the businesses that are on the west side of the boulevard? How is this going to impact the guests at the Kentville, the Hampton House Hotel, the Grand View, the Lighthouse Store, the Oceanside Hotel, the Atlantic Hotel, the Breakers, Jonathan's, the Sea Spiral, and the Beachcoma, or the Sea Breeze Suites, Dick Roy's place. Together, we're talking about hundreds of rooms and over the season, thousands of guests crossing four lanes of traffic to get to the beach is going to create a whole new safety problem. At least now you have the safety between the north and south lanes with the center parking lot. The discussion at the June 7th HBAC meeting was all about the safety of the day trippers, but not one word was spoken about the businesses and the guests that vacation here overnight and other ones that spend money at McGurk's or the boardwalk or the sea catch or money spent at the arcades. The day trippers arrive, they bring their own food and drinks, then leave. All of these businesses, as well as the residents and taxpayers that support the town of Hampton and the business owners are the ones that pay for the Hampton Beach Village District to promote this beach. Seven of the nine commissioners of the HBAC supported this. I'm not surprised that the two state commissioners were wholeheartedly agreed with the change since the state of New Hampshire will get 100 new parking spots with this change. The last two speakers were Selectman Rick Griffin and Chairman Nancy Stiles. Rick said, this is not what the people want. We had a public meeting. A lot of people were there. Rick made his argument against doing that. The chairman said, are we going to do what we want? And these are exact quotes. We're going to do what we want, or are are we going to do what the people want? She also did not support this change. I had an interesting conversation with Suzanne Roy at the Atlantic Hotel the other day. She said to me, and she's not here tonight. She was going to try to be, but of course all of you people are very busy right now. She said, I wonder, Chuck, if you can see her perspective. She said to me, I wonder if the Pelham was where the Atlantic is, how you would look at this. Because she thinks it's going to be, it could be very disruptive. And as you know, you have 10 to 12 weeks to make your whole living for the whole year. And all of those hotels that I talked about and all of those guests, imagine having 
construction going on. I can't imagine that they're going to do it in the dead of winter because they, they didn't when they did all this, you know, the parking lots and stuff. They did it during certain times. And it, it really, you, you've got to think about those business people because I didn't hear any talk about that. Everyone I talked to that actually lives along that stretch says the same thing. Don't fix what is not broken. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else? Can we get a little more update on the uh, Country Western Week? What the, you know, who's performing or? I would suggest stopping by the chamber. Well, no, I mean, just to put it out here and put I, it in, no? I don't think we have it all yeah, finalized. Yeah, if you want to yeah. make any comments about I have about posters. About, uh, You're going to go to show what yeah, you have? Yeah, yeah. And schedules Let me go out the car. car. I've got the, well, I've got the brochures oh, in the car. We've got yeah. this, we've got this venue of TV and. Yeah. Uh, just a Glenn. suggestion. Yeah, well, Glenn okay. has it right here. Oh, you got it? I, uh, Thank you, Glenn. I managed to carry one of the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Smarty. Glenn French, entertainment, uh, whatever I am. Um, in addition to our regular schedule of uh, entertainment every night, we have introduced a new venue. Uh, country Music Week. We're going to try an experiment. We've committed to uh, a five-year program where we'll start our music at noontime. It'll start the week after the 4th of July, so this year it is 8th through the 12th. Uh, a series of um, country bands that perform regularly here. Some of them are new. Uh, we're going to add uh, Ayla Brown in on Wednesday night. Uh, and on Thursday will be the big night. Uh, we're going to start off at noontime with uh, Timmy Brown um, and uh, A.J. Gatto, and then Jillian Cottarelli. Jillian is a, is a local gal, actually Haverhill uh, gal, has some connection to the, to the Cottarelli family on the beach, and then we will close the evening out with uh, William Michael Morgan. Uh, William Michael Morgan has had a couple of hit records uh, and uh, a couple of hit tunes. He sounds country, so it's one of the one of the reasons he was selected. Uh, nice young fella on his way up, hopefully, and we hope that that will carry. Uh, carry, yeah, he's got a nice cowboy hat, uh, and so all of our promotional materials are up. This has taken a little time for us to get together because a lot of us we've come together for a little discovery, tried to put things together. Uh, and essentially have been working um, uh, the, the schedule and the program uh, vigorously to get the whole thing together. So uh, it, it's going to be an interesting week. I'm concerned uh, to some degree that we may have overbooked ourselves. I don't know. Uh, but I think we're going to have a nice crowd. Um, we have already discussed this in detail, uh, in some detail with the chief of police. So um, we can work out any, any details that may have any corrections that have to be made if we have to uh, temporarily uh, divert traffic on Ocean Boulevard for that one night. We want to be prepared for it and we'll do all of the necessary permitting um, if, if that becomes necessary. But William Michael Morgan is our head, headliner uh, and hopefully it'll take off. We'll see. Glenn, he's, he's presently, he's on tour this summer. That's correct. Okay, so he's going to be coming here as part of his tour. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, following up on, on the entertainment program, we also have the Drifters coming again in, uh, in August. They haven't been here for at least uh, six or seven years, and they'll be here the first Friday in August in addition to all the other things we're doing. Uh, How many of them are original? Um, I, at least two. Uh, at least two. Um, I mean, th these are old bands, but you will, you, you will, you will recognize the tunes. You will recognize the tunes. Down by the boardwalk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good old timer. So, when, could, I think you need to give a shout out to that really wonderful jazz band that came all the way down from Vermont. You know, yeah. Um, who were they from? They were from. Uh, they were from Woodstock. Vermont. Woodstock, Vermont. Yeah, Woodstock, Vermont high school band came down on uh, June first. And they were kind of a high school trip. They went to Boston. Daniel uh, Hawley. 
Who? Faneuil. Faneuil Hall, yes. I remember. Uh, they performed at Faneuil Hall, and I don't know where else in this little tour, but they just wanted to come to the beach, and uh, they had a nice show. Um, so we're going to try to... Uh, we, I've already invited them back for next year, if we can work it into the schedule. It's early in the season, I know, and on a Friday night in June uh, or late May is somewhat difficult. But um, the, content was outstanding. The, the problem with high school bands is they graduate, and the students are not available to participate. And by the time they get worked back up again, it's, it's late in the season, and we're not doing entertainment. But... Um, both of them, both bands, I agree with you. One kind of high school did a nice job, ex yeah, exceptional, exceptional job. Right. So. And, and then, by the way, Glenn, you are the activities facilitator. I'm the activities facilitator. That. You that's need to remember that that's what I'm <laughs> facilitating, Right. is activities. Thank you. <laughs> You're an entertainment director. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that's what I'll I'm give you two titles. Okay. All right, any other public comment? <clears throat> Seeing none, closing comments, Bob? Just, I, I think it is time to start to proselytize with your friends and neighbors to support the Warren article that will be coming for the sewer pipe from the beach to the treatment plant. The vote on that is anticipated to occur late in August. It's not that very far away, so Keep that in mind. It's really, from an infrastructure point of view, the most critical and immediate need we have. Will there be a special town meeting? Yes. Yes. Is that the shooting by the end of August, I believe. End of August. Yeah. That's what the bill was. Yeah. The governor signed yeah. to authorize it. All right. Jeff Seattle is a great example where town government and state government worked very cooperatively for the greater good. Senator Ennis was involved, the reps were involved, the town selectmen were involved, the town manager was involved, and then the governor. So uh, we have to a good shout out to everybody who was working together. All right, on that, I'm going to close this meeting at 6.13. Thank you, and have a great night. Thank you, Channel 22.